what up guys, Irebism here and welcome back to another video. Have you ever wondered how to create and run a Minecraft server for you and your friends to play on? Well, in this tutorial I'm going to teach you just that and without further ado let's get started. Um, so the first thing I want to address actually before we begin is I've accumulated this experience over running servers for a few years now so I've accumulated enough knowledge to actually make this video and to teach you what I know and why I know it I guess and to really at the end result get you guys to run a server yourself so again the first thing we want to do actually to figure out is if we can run a server because there are some other requirements involved um, and that's you know your upload download speed and how much RAM your computer has so for example I have 60 60 and 8,000 and I'll explain this in just a second and then when I click this button it'll tell me. To figure out what your internet your upload and download speed is you're gonna go to speedtest.net and you're gonna click start test and then you're gonna copy these two values the download speed up here and the upload speed so you're gonna copy those values it keeps when I hover over it, it's gonna get rid of the values but you're going to copy those values into the text box, exactly. I'm just going to write 60 and 60. And if you need to figure out how much RAM you have, you simply go to your computer and you right click it and you would go to System Properties. On Windows 10, you just go like this. You go to this PC, System Properties. You go to this um, page, it'll be in Control Panel like this. And 8 gigabytes and 64 bit. Remember this part as well you need to know if you're 32 or 64 bit later in this video but I have 8 gigabytes so that would be 8,000 megabytes 1 gigabyte is 1,000 megabytes so you just do the calculation and then you click the button now this number does not really portray how much you can run without lag this does not take in consideration amount of lag or anything it's saying that you know 94 people can run on your server and basically it doesn't take in consideration chunks or how many you know what people are doing probably 94 players can run on my server standing still on one block and doing nothing and then there would be quote unquote no lag but I mean this isn't accurately measuring how much people can be on your you know server you know breaking blocks mining exploring etc so just as long as the number is over two you're good to go to run with at least one other or two other players and for example really quick here just to show you if you have really slow internet like this um, it's gonna say zero or if you say four or um, one thousand it's gonna say three not whether or not that's true is a different story but again this doesn't take in consideration um, your RAM being used by other programs and stuff so just keep that in mind because it's just a small rough estimate of what you're capable of um, so yeah um, now that we've covered that if it's you know you're good to go you can actually run a server so what we need to actually run the server is JRE Java JRE which is Java runtime environment this enables you to run Java programs like the server the server is a Java program and you need this software to run it so if you how to download this software is you press accept and now you can click these links. So you're gonna find your operating system and then the x86 and x64 means one thing and one thing only. 64-bit computers are x64 and x86 is 32-bit computers. And if you remember back, we took a look at you know what our operating system is, and for me it's 64-bit and just remember that and you would have to click x64 now remember to click the .exe if you're on windows not the .tar.gz that's for mac um, uh, also that's like a, that's not for mac but that's like a global like compressed file or something like that i think it's offline install i'm not sure but um yeah anyways you'd collect you would select the one that's not tar.gz so for me I would download this one I already have it installed so don't worry about that just install it and then come back to this part and now we have to figure out how to port forward and this this is the most um, 
issues where people have when creating a server they don't know how to port forward. I'm going to go over it. So first of all, you're going to type in CMD or command prompt, and you're going to run that program on your computer. I think on um, Mac it's terminal. I'm not sure what it is on Linux. I'm sorry. You'd have to Google it. Uh, a console for Linux. But anyways, what you guys want to do is once you're on this window, you're going to type in IP config and no spaces and press enter. And you're going to need two things. So first of all, your IPv4 address is something we'll need later. So keep this uh, command prompt open when we do the further steps. And your default gateway. So I have 192.168.1.1. Your default gateway is what you type into your web browser to get to your router settings. So 192.168.1.1. And then it's going to ask you to log in. You can find this information on your router or if your parents or someone in your household has changed this ask them get this information you need it you need to log in and port forward so I've already logged in now there's a bunch of information on your on the screen um, and you're gonna have to navigate somehow to port forwarding you're gonna have to find a link to port forward on your router page now if you're not sure where this is you need to go to portforward.com this is a very neat website that takes all the routers really the most common routers and it's going to tell you how to navigate to port forwarding on it so what you need is your router um, serial number and you find that on your router itself and then you would just go to routers port forwarding guides and you would click your router company and then you would then uh, you would close this page, you would click your router company, click the model number, and then, then it would ask you what game do you want to port forward, and you would click Minecraft server. It will be right over here, Minecraft server. Uh, I just saw it, Minecraft server, because you're doing it on your computer. And it's going to tell you exactly what it asks, and it's going to tell you this is, would be the router page and stuff for it. Anyways, once you've finished that part, you're going to go ahead and navigate to it. And it brings you up to this page. Now, this is very important, guys. That IPv4 um, thing that we got up here, this IPv4 address is very important. We want to port forward under that. That means this is your computer's internal IP. So you want to port forward under this. So Minecraft, Minecraft's ports are enabled on your computer so other people can connect. So for example, you're gonna, for my thing it's going to be like IP address to port forward. You're going to select the one that says your computer name or the one that contains your exact IPv4 address. Remember, like I said over here, it has to be exactly your IPv4 address. So 192.168.1.3 and that's exactly it. My computer name is also Reposum, so that helps. And then application to forward. Um, some of your routers will actually come with a list of games. And yeah, mo this one does not have Minecraft, so this is really good for the tutorial. What you want to do is just custom ports. You want to get to a port where you can enter it yourself. You want to go to an option where you can enter your own port. And then you're going to get TCP, UDP, and both. You're going to press both. You need to enable it for both. You're going to click 25565. That's the Minecraft ports. And you're going to enable it, remember, under the IPv4 address you specified before. And then just add. And then keep refreshing your page until it says active status. You want it to be green or something like that to indicate that it's active. You have port forwarded successfully. Now, you've since, since you've finally done this, you need to figure out what your IP address is and you're going to go to this website what's my IP.org and you're going to grab this IP now this is your external IP this is the IP that you want to give to your friends so they can connect to your server you do not want to give this to anyone else basically you want to just give it to people you can trust it's not safe to give away your IP address to anyone so if you want if you want to be safe there's another website noip.org no-ip.com actually sorry or noip.com 
and you make an account and then you can create um you can create a host so I can add a host and we can call it uh, see like this um, I can make a host name repisms server repism server and dot dd ddns.net and people would connect to that instead or serve p2p whatever and it's gonna have your IP address in there already um, and yeah you can select serve minecraft.net that's the one I usually use and then you can press add host um, again don't worry about this if you're not familiar with the website just use your current IP your external IP that you've got from what's my IP.org use that give it to your friends they'll be able to connect now once once you've done all of that we're gonna have to download minecraft so log into minecraft.net press download and click the minecraft server 1.8.8 jar or whatever version it's up to and you're gonna go ahead and copy this line of code without the dot okay the link w w will be in the description to this command but anyways you're gonna download it you're gonna go to a page um, that I'm gonna go to right now all files servers public server so you're gonna get it right here and you're gonna create a dot bat file I only really know how to do this on Windows to be honest with you guys I'm not sure how you do this on Mac I think you can just run it just fine on Mac but on Windows you need this command line and yeah just like this this is how I do it I added the pause just for clarity um, where minecraft server dot jar is you would is the exact name of this and then dot jar at the end no GUI and you're good to go and you run it like that and once you run your server you can get a crash it's gonna say you need to accept the EULA go ahead and double click the EULA and press true and save that um, and then go ahead and run the server again and yeah there you go it's gonna say all this error stuff because you don't have preloaded whitelist files or op files and ban files so it creates an error it recreates them you're fine don't worry it created a world it'll say preparing spawn area and once it says done people are able to connect to your server so we're gonna go ahead and click minecraft and we're gonna log in on uh, 1.8 as well and that external IP like I said the what's my IP dot com that address um, you're gonna give to your players and they're gonna be able to connect like this now for example mine is right there and I'm gonna go ahead and press done connect to it and I'm on my public server that I just created it'll take a little bit to load sometimes uh, if you know if you ever have a problem just reconnect like that you should be good to go and yeah uh, that's how you create a server guys um, there you go I just had to uh, tweak the command prompt yeah there you go we're on my server I'm the only one online so yeah just to prove that it works I was using my IP I'm not using localhost and yeah that's how you create a server thanks for watching guys peace out now <laughs>